What's up YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use responsive typography in your web design projects. Be sure to subscribe to see more videos and a huge thank you to those of you who support this channel so more videos can be made. If we're looking at a project that uses responsive typography, if we drag in from the sides, one thing you'll notice is everything locks in like a unit and scales seamlessly. So even if we're looking at a grid with two columns or three columns and we're dragging in or out, it's all just scaling. So the text isn't really wrapping. However, we designed it on one size, it's kind of just staying that way. Now on certain screens, depending on your uh, design, if this were to scale up forever, it may just get too large and overwhelming. So like on a 27 inch monitor or something, you may set a max font size once you get to one of those points and all the topography will just sort of lock in place and all the elements and you'll just see a little bit of space on each side. So that's one option for using responsive typography. But one of the pros about it is it makes it super easy to make adjustments across all the breakpoints. And here's what I mean. Basically, you set your body font size to whatever you'd like. So in your website, it can be set to pixels, but then it won't scale, but that's an option. Um, and then that's usually where you would set it to viewport width. That way it all scales like a unit. And then you can either create a new breakpoint at a larger screen size or you could um, create a media query to set this to pixels at a larger size so it just stops scaling at a certain point. Um, so with this sort of method, everything's just gonna be based off whatever your body font size is. So like if we look at a heading or a display text, um, its font size is uh, 5.6 EM. That's uh, almost five times, over five times what the body font size is. So I'm going to leave a clonable style guide in the description of this video. But basically what you'll see here is I have all my headings and uh, different font sizes set. And um, for the line height, I'm actually just unit using a unitless line height. So that way um, we don't have to keep adjusting the size on different breakpoints. But basically if we were to grab the body font size, and let's say we want to set it to something like 16 pixels, or um, however many pixels, you'll notice everything inside it is scaling up or down with the body font size, which is exactly what we would expect. So um, you can kind of make changes, like if you want on mobile all your font sizes to be slightly smaller, just go ahead and decrease the font size uh, of the body and they're all going to scale down together like a unit. Another really cool pro about using uh, this sort of uh, style or this sort of setup is if you want it to make everything inside say one particular card smaller like this one's using all my paragraph sizes it's inheriting it from the body um, usually I would have to create a class on all my paragraphs in here to reduce the size because I don't want this one to be smaller but if I wanted everything in here to be smaller I could grab this card and I could set it to 1e image just default what the body font size is but anything below that will decrease it, anything above it will increase it. So it can get larger or smaller. Um, and I'm not having to create new classes on each one of these. So um, that's really helpful like on mobile, say you have all your nav links out, and then on mobile you wanna make them bigger so it's easier to touch and tap. Uh, you can just grab that nav menu and increase the font size on that container using EMs, and then everything set to EMs inside it is gonna scale up or down. Um, it's same thing with the footer. If you want everything in there to scale down, you can set it that way. So there's also REMs, and REMs are a little bit different than EM. And basically, REMs inherit from the HTML font size, which you can't change in Webflow. So it's a little bit more difficult. You would have to write some code to do it. Whereas if we use EMs, we can use the body font size and quickly make adjustments across all breakpoints without having to write a lot of code. Like on here, if I notice all my font sizes are getting a little too small, I can just adjust the body and they're all gonna scale up from there. Um, and then another advantage to using EMs is that you can do this trick where if you scale the font size of a container, everything inside it scales. Where if you use REMs, that's inheriting from the HTML font size, not from its direct parent. So you can't scale everything up or down super easily with that method. So that's one of the reasons I like using EMs, um, and that's kind of how you can use it to make your site super scalable. Another thing that you'll need to probably do, you'll notice like 
I'm setting a lot of times I'm setting my paddings using EMs. I'm setting my border radius, my margins. That way just everything's kind of scaling. So I'm not just using this for font sizes. I'm even using it for say widths of an image. Like the width of this image is set using EMs. And because the body font size is viewport width, this is gonna scale like a viewport width image just up and down. Um, so that's kind of, it makes it a little easier to make things really scalable. And then another thing is we'll want to have our sections. So like say this section has this sort of very light uh, gradient background here. You can hardly see it, but on a large screen, like, um, a, like say a 2000 pixel wide screen, I'd want that gradient to span the full width, not just stay inside that container. So that's where it's helpful to have a section. And then inside there, you can have a container that stops at whatever you want your max width to be. So in this case, I want my max width to be uh, uh, 1,440 pixels. So um, once it hits that size, it's just going to stop growing. And it's going to center align because I'm using margin auto left and right. And um, th at that size, that uh, this size here, that's where I'm changing my font size to pixels on the body. So this text doesn't get insanely huge on large screens and sort of break my layout. Um, so what you can do for that is just use a div, honestly, is what I use for the containers and for the sections. And the reason being, a lot of people will say use Webflows containers, which there's nothing wrong with using Webflows containers, but if we go to the site and say we where to use a Webflow container. And I'm just gonna set a background color so you can actually see it. So we have this container set. It's automatically gonna have a max width applied to it. And we can change that max width with code, but that's just sort of an extra step. Whereas it would be better just to drag in a div from the start and be able to set the max width to whatever we want it to be, not being locked into Webflow's um, max width. So if I right click on this container that I just drug in from Webflow and inspect, you'll see that it's a div anyway. It's not any sort of special tag. It's literally just a div that Webflow gave a class that has this max width of 940 pixels, which isn't very large at all. Um, so more often than not, you'll probably want to set your own max width and you can do that really easy by dragging in your own div with your own class of container. Another really odd thing that they have is sections. So if we were to drag in like this section and kind of I'll add some padding so we can see it and I'll give it a different background color. Um, and if we were to go to the publish site. So with Webflow sections, if I right click and inspect and then in here, I'm going to see that this section is also just a div with a class of section. There's no reason why I couldn't just use my own div for this to make it a section. Now, what's good about this is keeping in mind that structure. Like even if you're using divs, make sure you have your section for your div. Make sure you have a div inside that for your container. And then inside that, have your actual content. And then one other thing I do like to do is make this div an official section, unlike the Webflow section that we're seeing here. Um, so I'm gonna drag in this div, and you'll see what I mean. If I just give it a little bit of padding, I can change the HTML tag from div to section. And this actually helps with um, SEO, especially if you're using Navbar or Footer or some of these other ones too. It helps uh, search engines know it clearly defines what this type of content is and they're better able to easily read your page and know where to find things. So now if I click on this div that I just added with the tag of section, you'll see that it actually is an HTML tag section, not the Webflow div with the class of section. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope it cleared up some common questions that I know I had. I had to start doing some research to find the answers to these things because I was curious as to What's the difference between these different containers and sections? How do we make things scalable? And how can we make sites look really great on a super large screen? So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you next time.